Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and one of the conspiracy theories that I've heard for most of my life is this idea that the moon landing never happened. Now I actually used to believe this because I had heard the basic arguments, you know, the why can't I see stars, why is the flag moving, all that kind of stuff. But eventually I came to realise that I was wrong about it. The things that I wondered actually had pretty simple explanations. The reason why you can't see the stars is because of the exposure of the camera. The reason why the flag waves is because of its momentum. Now when I did believe this idea, it wasn't really something that I paid a whole lot of attention to. Like, I didn't go out of my way to try and find more evidence that I was right. However, that is what people do when they believe this kind of stuff. They will go over a whole lot of NASA footage just to find little bits where they can go, aha, look, they faked it right there. Now today, we're gonna look at someone who does exactly that. Conspiracy Todd is a YouTuber that has 65 videos called Change My Mind The Moon Landing Hoax. Now typically when people use the whole change my mind meme, they don't actually want you to change their mind. They're using it as a way to try and get you to debate them. And I use the word debate very loosely there because most of these things aren't actually debates. So let's see what Conspiracy Todd has for us today. Hey guys, Conspiracy Todd here again. And in this week's video, I'm gonna show you about four fraudulent things in this short little video that I found here. All right, so two things. The first is that I forgot to put on my Illuminati glasses, so let's do that. And the second thing is, Todd, why do you have a camera app open to record rather than just recording a camera in OBS. That's what I do all the time. I'm just pointing it out in case he doesn't know that he can do it because, you know, some people don't know how to do these things. My main piece of advice here is hotkeys are your friend. Okay, now at this point in the video, I've got it played at two times normal speed, but I'm just showing you this so you can see that he can easily bend his knees at a 90 degree angle or even more. Although you'll notice that right there, he is basically kneeling. So it seems like to bend your knees like that, you have to kneel. Uh, also notice the, the flag has been standing here for several minutes. It's all the movement should be gone out of it. The other guy's gonna come up here and he's gonna jump. I mean, that was the second lame attempt, but here we go. All right, well, you'd think he jumped a little over a foot. The Apollo spacesuits, they weighed about 180 pounds on Earth. They only weighed about 30 pounds on the moon. And these guys, they probably weighed about 180 pounds. So together, the 30 pound, uh, you know, they weighed about 360 pounds on Earth. But on the moon, they only weighed 30 pounds and 30 pounds. They only weighed 60 pounds on the moon. One-sixth. And that's as high as this guy could jump. Was... Uh, you know, a little over a foot. So obviously when it comes to how high you can jump, there are more factors that come into it rather than just how much you weigh. Whilst that may be part of it, one of the other big factors is how much force do you produce? And when it comes to that video, it doesn't really look like he's producing all that much force, especially seeing as he doesn't bend his knees all that much. Now, when you take that into consideration, it makes sense why he'd only be able to jump a foot, especially seeing as he's on the moon. Try it for yourself. Try barely bending your knees and jumping a foot high. It's not that easy. Okay, now we're gonna play it in normal speed with the audio so you can hear what they're saying. The outstanding picture here, I tell you. Come in a little bit closer. Okay, here we go, a big one. A big one. A big one. If you are on the moon and you could bend your knees 90 degrees, aren't you gonna do a big one and you're on video camera and they're taking pictures for posterity and you're only gonna jump a little over a foot in the air and you only weigh 60 pounds? Does any of that make sense? So if you remember back to when he showed the astronaut was bending his knees, he was bending his knees when he was pretty much kneeling down. Bending your knees while kneeling down seems like it would be a lot easier to do than bending your knees when standing up. Well, at least in an astronaut suit. So if bending your knees is rather difficult when standing up, it makes sense why you might not want to bend your knees a whole lot just to do a jump. The next part, remember I said to watch the flag, the flag's not moving. The other guy comes over here. Okay, watch the flag. The flag's moving. Why is the flag moving? I think it's because this guy turned and forced air onto the flag. So I will admit this one was a little bit confusing because if there's no air, then how can a flag that's stationary start waving a little bit? So to answer this, we do need to point out something first. And that is that 
The clip that he is showing is on two times speed. If you put it to one time speed, then it's not as dramatic as it initially seems. And another thing is, because of how many things that could be happening here, I don't think that there is a definitive way to actually get an answer to this. And honestly, that is what sometimes makes conspiracy theories so compelling, because they say, we can give you an answer, definitely. But that being said, here are a few things that could impact it. The main thing, of course, being vibrations. Astronauts moving around can cause vibrations on the ground, those vibrations can affect the flagpole, and the flagpole vibrating can cause the fabric to start swaying. There is also the possibility that some of the dust that got kicked up could have hit the flagpole, also causing the flag to start swaying. I also consulted some other people to get their opinions, but the consensus was that it's really difficult to know exactly what's going on there. To really understand what's happening there, you would have to go ahead and do some kind of computational modelling, and not everyone has the time to do that. This is the point where a conspiracy theorist would usually come along and say, well, you don't have a satisfactory answer. I do, therefore I must be right. However, the conspiracy theorist explanation relies on this to be fake in order to make sense. If it's not fake, then the conspiracy theory explanation doesn't work because there would be no atmosphere in order to move it. So if there's a way to figure out whether this was fake or real using something else in the video, then we might be able to tell whether his explanation makes sense or not. Now he does have another reason why he thinks that it's fake, but while he is saying that, I want you to look at the shadows of the astronauts in relation to one another. It might give you a clue. He turns, now the flag starts moving. Also, another thing, watch this, this guy's doing the little bunny hops. This guy is walking normally. He forgot to do the bunny hops. Anyway, just a bunch of fakery on this one little video from Apollo 16. So first to address why he thinks that it's fake, he says that one person is walking while the other person is doing bunny hops. And the reason for that is because they are different people People like to travel in different ways because not everyone is the same. When I was a kid I used to prefer skipping over running because I felt like I could travel further and faster when skipping rather than when running. And that's because I'm not the same as everyone else. If I was an astronaut I might prefer one form of movement over another because it might just feel easier to me. This just feels like a case of you don't need a conspiracy in order to explain this. And yes, I will keep on saying that whenever I feel that it is appropriate. Alright, so I'm sure everybody is wondering, why did I get you to look at the shadows? Well, if you look very closely at the shadows in that video, you will notice that they are par- Hey guys, this is Conspiracy Todd again, and I need to add to last night's video. Oh come on, I was just about to explain why it's definitely real, and you're gonna do that to me? Okay, I guess we should hear what he has to say. And why doesn't he have his glasses on? He looked way cooler with his glasses on, by the way. Some of my friends over on this uh, Facebook page, The Moon Landing Hoax, pointed out that there is a fourth area of fraud on this uh, Apollo 16 video that I was talking about. Ah, so I see that he gets some of his information at least from an echo chamber. And if there's one thing that echo chambers excel at, it is finding any and all reasons why you must be right, even if you're wrong. And that is right here, when he jumps. He jumps up to the top here. All of the sand, by the time he reaches the apex of his jump, all the sand has already went back to the ground. Now that's not how it works, or it shouldn't be how it works. But that is how it works. If you know how forces work, you would know that. I found this video of this uh, volleyball player here, and watch what happens when she jumps here on Earth. I've slowed it down, obviously. She goes up, and then she's got this sand over here, and the sand lands at the same time she does. That's how things are supposed to happen with gravity. Two objects, you know, a tennis ball and a bowling ball, if you drop them from the same height, they're going to land at the same exact time. And the reason why they will land at the exact same time is because they are falling from the exact same height. If two things fall from different heights, then the one that is lower is going to hit the ground first. He jumps, he's bringing some sand with him. By the time he reaches the top of his jump, the sand has already hit the ground. Except it did not look like that was the case to me. It looked like to me when he reached the apex of his jump there was still some dust that hadn't hit the ground yet. 
Of course, this isn't the easiest thing to see because this is a rather old camera and the dust was rather dispersed by then, but it was still visible there. Now to answer the question of why did the dust hit the ground before he had finished jumping, well, the answer is actually rather simple there. It's because that dust wasn't kicked up at the same velocity that he was jumping at. If all the dust was kicked up at the same velocity as him, then yeah, it would all reach the ground at the same time. But if some of the dust was kicked up at a slightly lower velocity than him, then it is going to reach the ground sooner. This is because it doesn't have to decelerate as much before it can accelerate towards the ground. This is pretty easy to understand if you've ever done anything with physics. And I don't mean complicated physics either. If you've ever made a platformer video game, you should understand this. So, that's fake. How did they achieve that? I think they had suspension wires on him that held him up and kept him from falling at the, the rate of gravity. But the sand, you know, they couldn't stop the sand from falling at the rate of gravity. Because if they were really on the moon, the sand and the astronaut would fall at the, back to Earth. I mean, by, well... It actually is Earth. They would fall back to the moon, or in this case the fake moon, at the same speed. I'm sorry, but physics disagrees with you. And if you want to say otherwise, well, then you have some homework to do. Let's say that you have three objects. All three objects start on the ground, and gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, like on Earth. Object A is fired up at 10 meters per second, object B is fired up at 20 meters per second, and object 3 is fired up at 5 meters per second. Calculate how long it is going to take each object to reach the ground again. And like when it comes to all physics, just assume zero air resistance. This should not be too hard to calculate, and I want to put it to Todd to try and calculate this for himself. If he can get a close answer, then he's got the reason as to why the dust doesn't hit the ground at the same time as the astronaut. Now with that point answered, I want to answer the question that everybody has been wondering. How do we know that it's not faked? And the answer is, the shadows. They are parallel. If this was filmed on a stage, then the shadows would not be parallel to one another, because that is not how stage lighting works. Stage lighting would cause the shadows to diverge from one another, and as the shadows got further away from the astronauts, we would see the shadows become bigger. So that is how we know that it's real. And if it's real, then all the reasons why it's fake must have other explanations. It is rather funny that conspiracy theorists will not look at the rather simple evidence of why something is real and look for all the minute details which might mean that it's fake. But you know, years ago I would have agreed with this person because the shadows on the ground just wouldn't have been something that I would have thought about. Especially considering the fact that when you're looking at something that you agree with, you don't immediately think of all the ways that they could be wrong. But I guess that's why people like myself exist, in order to debunk stuff like this. But anyway, I do hope that Todd sees this video because he will at least have to think about things that he may not have thought about before. As always, if you do want to let him know about this, make sure you do it politely. Do not harass him because that's the policy that we have here. Do not harass anyone that I talk about. And in case anything happens between now and the time that the video releases, there are a few exceptions. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. If you're supporting me on Patreon, then you might actually be seeing this early because I decided, you know, I'm gonna put this video out early for my patrons. There is a relatively obscure reason for this video being recorded early, but I'm not gonna tell anyone, and if you figured it out, just keep it a secret. But that was a bit of a weird tangent. So, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, keep an eye on the shadows.